This video involves working with equipment with potentially dangerous voltages inside. A mistake could damage the equipment or you. So if you don't know what you're doing or aren't completely willing to take responsibility for your own safety, leave this to a professional, don't try this at home, and consider this video to be for entertainment purposes only. Ow! Okay, in part one we got uh, the red and white wires sorted out up here. And now it's time to take the green wires, which you can see uh, just wrapped up here, here, and here. Take those three green wires, tie them together, and connect them down to the, uh, the common terminal down there. So, uh, let's give that a shot. Okay, I didn't get a particularly neat job. It was, uh, it's really difficult to reach over here. It's a really awkward position to work in, but I did manage to get the, uh, the three green wires unwrapped and uh, connected together, tied to this wire, which comes over and goes to the, uh, the common terminal. So now all three thermostat locations should have a common wire and uh, now it's possible to install the new thermostats there. Okay, here's the thermostat that I'm gonna be installing. Uh, it's the Eco B3. Um, I looked at a couple other options like the Nest um, and, and a few others, but this is the one that seemed to be best for my circumstances anyway. Um, a couple of advantages of this, uh, I mean really the best ones do seem to be this and the Nest. Uh, this has the advantage that they both do um, Alexa and IFT or IFTTT, uh, which is nice. This one also does Apple HomeKit. I'm not sure that's going to be important to me, but I like having the additional option. Uh, I don't think Nest will ever support HomeKit because uh, you know, they're owned by Google, so they're a competitor with Apple. Uh, maybe they will, but I don't know. Um, this also has the remote temperature sensor, which is really nice. You can add, add additional ones. And because I have three thermostat locations, you can install three of these and they work together. I think the Nest will do that also, but uh, this does a good job of it. And um, also, you know, I'm not thrilled with, uh, with Nest in general as part of uh, Google and uh, their privacy practices. Um, you know, they, Nest says that they'll never share that data with, uh, with Google, but Google has changed their mind before on privacy policy. They've, they've you know, made promises and, and reneged on them. So, uh, you know, I'd avoid them if I can. Um, I did get the, uh, the Nest Protect um, smoke alarms, but uh, there really wasn't a good alternative for those. So, um, this being the one I've chosen, um, as I said, you can, you can use multiple ones of these together. Um, they do hint on Ecobee's website that uh, they may be coming out with cheaper satellite ones in the future, not temperature sensors, but separate uh, control units. So you could have one of these and then two of the cheaper unit at additional locations and they would all coordinate. You'd sort of have all the, the brains in one. Um, there's no indication of when that might be. Um, since this is on sale right now, um, for more, a little over 50 bucks off, if this works out, I'm going to buy another two and, and just go with that because uh, they will work together fine. Um, I just, you know, potentially I could save some money by waiting, but I don't know if I want to wait. You know, it could be a year or more. There's no guarantee when it'll come out if ever. So um, it's expensive, but I'm going to go ahead with it and hope that uh, over time. Uh, it'll save me some money in being able to reduce fuel costs and also in convenience, uh, you know, the, the convenience will be improved and also potentially safety features. I could have this uh, hooked up with, uh, with the Nest Protect and IFT. I could have, uh, if it detects carbon monoxide, for example, I could have IFT tell the Ecobees to shut off the furnace um, since that's a likely source of carbon monoxide. So, you know, that's a nice feature. Um, so let's take this apart and or open it up rather and see what's in here. Okay. So we have the, uh, the, the, uh, the unit and the temperature thing. So let's download the Ecobee app. I already did that because uh, I knew there was going to be an app to set it up. Uh, what does it say on the inside? It says, welcome to the, welcome to the hive. I don't think you can read that. But. All right, so here's the uh, the little remote temperature sensor, and you can put, you can get more of these. I'm not sure how the maximum is. It might be 16. I mean, more than I would ever need. Uh, I think each of these come with one, and um, you know, three of these plus three remote temperature sensors would actually work pretty well for me. Maybe additional one downstairs here, but um, I think that's three is probably a good number for me. Um, oh, also, uh, I said. Uh, 
They might have a satellite unit. That's not the same thing as the Ecobee Lite. That is a kind of a, a slightly dumber um, smart thermostat. It's not like a satellite unit for this. They don't work together. Um, so that it would, this would be some new product that's not yet shipping if they did come out with that. Uh, so here's the uh, this unit. Thermostat under here we have, I guess this is a little mount for this. Uh, this thing. Uh, do not use this if you have a C wire. Okay, so I think this is a, I think I know what this is, but I'll, I'll look into this and I don't need it anyway. And then uh, talk about that later. And then under here are screws and stuff. Um, yeah, well, I'll set that aside. Let's look at this. Now here's the actual unit itself. <clears throat> uh, oh, hey, look at that. There's a little uh, spirit level in there to help you get it installed correctly. That's a really nice touch. Um, all right, so this is kind of a common thing with uh, digital thermostats that they have the, the this piece that you mount to the wall and you screw the wires into and it stays on the wall and then you can uh, take the thermostat itself off uh, for example to change batteries on um, some thermostats um, although I don't believe this needs batteries it should get all this power from uh, <coughs> excuse me from uh, from the 24 volt uh, and, and probably has an internal battery to save it up in case outages and so on um, so here we have the terminals um, the ones we're interested in here are RH, that's the red for heating. There's also a RC for cooling. Uh, red for heating, it, this is the 24 volt supply for uh, the heating side of things. If you have cooling, they might share a, a red or they might be separate. Um, in this case, we just have the heating. There's the common there, C. Uh, y would be for cooling, uh, let's see. White 1 and white 2 are the, the heat triggers, and Y1 and Y2 are the cooling triggers. So we only have y, uh, W1, the white for uh, for heating. OB, I think, is for heat pump something, like reversing the valve when you switch from heating to cooling or something. Some accessory terminals. Um, yeah, so and G, I think, is for the fan on an air conditioner. I, I'm not sure about all this. All, all we really care about here is that the, we need the RH for 24 volt power. Uh, C for common for the power, and then uh, W1 is uh, the uh, applying the 24 volts, so that turns on the heat. That's all we need here, since we have a heat-only system. So this is going to be our red wire, our green wire, and our white wire. Uh, I think I said in the earlier video that uh, the common wire was normally brown. Looking some more, I'm not sure that there is a standard for that. Um, it, it, you wouldn't ideally use green for that, but that's the color I have, so... Um, it should be obvious to someone that, well, red is red, uh, white is white, the other color must be uh, the common, and green is sort of a, you know, green is common for ground, and hopefully they'll understand that. Um, as I said, they have this little spirit level to help you get it uh, installed straight up and down, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I guess we just screw this to the wall, put the wires in, and go. Um, at this point, I believe I'm supposed to uh, start up the application and follow the instructions there. Of course, I'm recording with the uh, the phone that the uh, application is on, so I won't be able to film this part, but uh, I'll uh, come back to you shortly. I did miss that uh, underneath here, there was uh, more stuff. There was a, a larger trim plate, if you had like a, a much larger uh, thermostat and you need to kind of cover up the hole or something, or just whatever, for whatever aesthetic reasons you wanted it, you could use this. Um, and there's some books in here. There's a quick start guide, an installation guide. Let's take a look at these and set this aside. Oh, and there's some stickers. B stickers. So here's the uh, quick start guide. the oh and there's some wire labels here power extender kit wire labels that's for for this unit here um, let's see yep G fan I was right about that heat pump reversing valve okay 
I remember these things correctly, not that they matter. And there goes the furnace, which is still on. All right, well, I'm going to take a look at this, and uh, I'll be back shortly. So here's the thermostat I'm going to replace to start with. Uh, as you can see, it's the really old-fashioned, uh, basic-style thermostat. Uh, despite the fact that the uh, person who built the house put in a fairly fancy boiler system, as you, as you saw, uh, he went with these really basic, uh, cheapest-option thermostats for some reason. But that's okay, because we're going to replace it. So we take the cover off there. There's some screws. And there's some screws. There's kind of a two-layer arrangement to this. So I'm not sure we've got the right screws or not, but we'll see. screws there. Okay, the reason it didn't seem to be coming loose is that it was actually uh, painted to the wall a little bit here. Oops, we lost the screw. There we go. Oops, dropping pieces here. All right. So you can see here the uh, the red and the white wire. Uh, I've got the power turned off to the furnace, of course. We're going to remove these screws. Remove this whole plate. All right, next I'm going to try to test fit the uh, the backing plate here. Because uh, this, the whole, the sort of the mark that the old thermostat left is up quite a bit from that hole. So let's see how this is going to work. Let's see if I, okay, so I could actually reuse this screw hole, still be able to have the wire get through and cover up that circle from where they didn't paint underneath the old one. Um, so that looks like it'll work. All right, so let's take this off. And I'm going to uh, drill this out and install the uh, the new screws. Interesting, it's a white screw there, uh, but I'll put in the um, the drywall anchor thing and the screw. Okay, got the drywall anchor in, and now I'm going to attach the plate. And by the way, the situation where there's a big mark on the wall is exactly the kind of situation where you might want that uh, that bigger round white plate uh, as an easy fix to hide. Uh, you know, something that doesn't look so good otherwise. So I'm put the screw in. All right, got the top screw in, uh, and I've slid it up a little bit in this channel just to, to hide more of that uh, mark there. Uh, now let's get the uh, get the bottom place marked here. It's really nice that they give you this little spirit level. Uh, that looks pretty good, and um, just interesting because it, it's you know purely for aesthetic reasons to have it uh, to have it level for, on this thermostat, uh, which is nice. I mean, you want it to look nice, but uh, on the other kind of thermostat, it's really important that you get it level because it actually affects the uh, the accuracy of the of the temperature setting, and I'll talk about that later. All right, so I've got it where I want it. I'm going to mark uh, the center of that hole. Let's push that screw in so it'll make a mark on the wall. And uh, it's not important that we get the hole exactly in the right place because this slot can move back and forth. So, uh, in fact, I'm going to uh, remove this again so I can drill the uh, drill for the drywall anchor. Okay, got the new drywall anchor drilled in there. And I'll slide this back on. I put this screw back where it goes. Started. Get that not too snug. We'll adjust this. We're level and see we still have quite a bit of a uh, tilt we can work with because of this the length of the slot. So I'll try to get that centered up. 
it should be level looks pretty good and we'll get the screw in now we'll snug this up a little bit more okay that should be good so next we need to deal with the wires now let's see we're going to have red go over here red and green are going to go over here and the white is going to go over here we need to get this green one unwound and this is for quite small gauge wire this is quite stiff um, don't really need to uh, have a, a, a super long length of this strip here. So I'm going to use this kind of crummy stripper is the one I have handy. I have a nicer one with my uh, electronic stuff that's still packed up. So, wow. Yeah, this one is pretty crummy. Okay. this back into the wall a little bit I think I think these are a little long I'm gonna knit these up I'm not too worried about taking a little length off of these because there's plenty of as you can see the, the cable pulls out pretty far so it's not like I'm using up a lot of the length here Put that in okay, here's the uh, back of the unit that should just slot on there. I noticed this uh, little cover here. Before we uh, I'll just take a look in here. Oops, I didn't even show that. Yep. So uh, I was out of frame. So there's this little cover here. I just pulled it out. I was curious what was in there. Uh, it's a little connector. I think this may be for programming um, or uh, testing during manufacturing. Doesn't seem to be anything we're concerned with. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, oh, let's go turn the power on and see what happens. Okay, power's on. Uh, it's got a little uh, logo there. The glare from this plastic film is uh, pretty bad, so we'll take that off. All right, now I repositioned the camera to get rid of that glare. So it's asking me uh, that it's detected a wire connected to the RH terminal. It wants to know if we have RH or RC and RH. Basically, heating only or heating and cooling. So we'll tell it uh, that. Let's see next. You know, these lines on the... Uh, the LCD display may be a problem here, but we'll see what happens after setup. See, it's like the lines are going right through stuff. I don't think they did that on purpose. Check the wiring the following terminals. Yes, that looks right. Okay, two things. Uh, one, I, I realized it says if you only have the one red wire, it wants it on RC and not on RH. Uh, it seemed to be okay with that, but you know, let's go ahead and do it the right way. Uh, also, I forgot that I meant to put on these labels on the wires. Uh, they include them, so you know, why not? Let's do that. Okay, got my uh, red wire moved over. Got them labeled, not terribly neatly, but they're labeled. And I moved this uh, white wire was sitting on top of here and preventing it from sitting really flush, so I bent that up a little bit. So let's go uh, plug this back in and uh, turn on the power. Okay, coming back up. This time there aren't lines. Oh, there are lines in the screen again. Hmm. It's really strange, but they weren't there initially, so is that a problem with the dead LCD or not? We'll see what happens. I have a bad feeling that this may have to go back and get uh, exchanged for another one. Well, let's wait while it boots up. Okay, it booted up, and since I disabled in the middle of setup, uh, Hmm. Right, 
to restart the registration. I wonder if there's a restart. We can do this over again. Yeah, reset. Reset all. Let's just try it all over again. Okay. Boy, these, uh, I really think there's a problem with this LCD. So we have RC only. RCC in one, uh, white, yep. New humidifier, dehumidifier, ventilator. Fahrenheit, one stage heating boiler. I'm going to call this, uh, call this bedroom for now. I think I'm going to change it to bedrooms, plural, since this will be controlling the two upstairs bedrooms. Sixty-four. I'm going to enable Smart Away. United States, New York area, or New York time zone rather, which is Eastern. Now it's connected to the home Wi-Fi. Use iPhone or iPad. All right, at this point, I'll have to stop filming. Well, it's uh, in and working. Still has the line, so we're going to have to contact them about uh, probably a warranty replacement, unless it's some kind of firmware issue, but it seems really doubtful. Um, so, but there it is. Installed and working.